And this is where we are going to ask, how do you have a campaign that's integrated um, and brings on all the different stakeholders? And this will help you to increase your participation. So the person who's going to give us the first introduction is Dr. Maria Isabel Portia Villares, who is from the Basque region in Spain. And we saw that slide that was shown by Iris that the Basque region has got quite high levels of participation. So she's going to give us an introductory talk. And then on the panel, we have Dr. Carlo Senore from the Centre at the Prevention Cancer Prevention Centre for the region of Piedmonte and the the Hospital Giovanni Battista di Torino in Turin, Professor Julia Spichak, Professor of Internal Medicine from the Charles University in Prague, and a past president of the Board of Society of Gastroenterology, and Dr. Titi Sak Sakiala, the Director of Screening for the Finnish Cancer Registry. So let me start by passing the floor to Maria. And we've got some very loud sounds in the background. Could I invite everyone? To have your yourself on mute, please. Except Thank me you for the moment, and then I'll pass to Isabel. I do see a few people who are not on mute yet. If you could please mute yourselves, that's it. Great. Okay, Isabel, let me pass the floor to you. Yeah. Can you see me? Yes, we can see you and your slides. My slides are so well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for this invitation. I think it's very, very interesting meeting because it's very important yeah, to involve uh, all uh, stakeholders, all population and authorities in these uh, challenges. Um, briefly, I like to, to share my um, yeah, uh, our story about uh, our trajectory about the colorectal cancer screening in the Basque Country. Yeah, Basque Country is a small region in, in the north of Spain uh, with uh, 2 million to 200,000 people. Mm? And uh, the, the, uh, I'd I like to, to, yeah, to, to, uh, to show uh, our trajectory in planning period organization, implementation, pilot phase, towards total coverage, and plan, adjust, check, improve. That is uh, our, uh, our uh, normal uh, 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 day by day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in planning period uh, in 2008, yeah, uh, because of the cancer that uh, advisor board approved the colorectal cancer screening, start the screening in the Basque Country. Mm -hmm. uh, the press communication was in May 2008, and uh, uh, we, uh, we have the opportunity to, uh, to study and to uh, review uh, literature, uh, uh, to organize, to check, uh, and to do benchmarking. Uh, in this case, uh, we started involvement uh, all 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 people yeah in this case managers primary care it laboratory endoscopy pathology and society uh, toward meetings meetings and teams we uh, made a proposal the proposal uh, with uh, a docs and review and approval. And in this uh, proposal, we include fit tests with uh, um, 20 micrograms hemoglobin by, uh, by uh, feces. And uh, we include to send the, the kit uh, uh, by post. And we include to uh, in, uh, to uh, uh, perform all colonoscopies under sedation, and this is was the the first uh, the first brochure, and after that we carry out uh, the program. Let's go. Let's go. In two thousand nine, we have a, a six months for preparedness organization. Central coordination. We are a few people, only three staff, 
three Isabels, uh, three administrative support, and but we are an enormous uh, network in uh, the Basque Country to perform the program. The software, the software uh, we uh, we developed a software connected uh, link with the uh, uh, medical record. Um, is very, very important because we can follow uh, all indicators of quality by our computers, mailing and uh, drop the, 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 uh, the kit in, uh, in some box in the health centers without any appointment, using all channels, all channels to uh, send to hospitals. Online, we have a online, very, very important to solve any any questions from staff uh, and from uh, population. Training, training, and training. Training be before before uh, start the the, uh, the the program, uh, before uh, invitation with uh, uh, population with uh, staff uh, training and uh, feedback to results. Communication, communication uh, to doctors by the, the, the medical record. They can see the, all results in the medical record. It can, they can follow uh, all their patients and press media. Uh, media are very, very important for us. Implementation, implementation uh, first uh, eight health centers informative letter, kids by post was the first, yeah. three laboratories, colonoscopy, three referral centers under sedation, under sedation, 50% of the, our uh, colonoscopies are uh, under sedation uh, by digestive uh, endoscopist or uh, by anesthesiologist. Follow up all invitations and positive cases in coordination with health centers and with endoscopies and with uh, pathologists as well. And pilot phase, uh, 15,000 invitees. Uh, participation rate uh, yeah, was uh, not bad. 600 positive rate, higher than expected. 90% of colonoscopy adherents, primary care and DGC staff satisfaction, that is, was the first, the first uh, um, enormous satisfaction for us, but more congrats from patient association. And we meet uh, the, our, uh, our meetings uh, with patient association in Bilbao and in Vitoria and in Madrid as well. And uh, they are uh, enormous, enormous uh, support for us and for population. Towards total coverage, because uh, Parliament, uh, we, uh, in regional Parliament agreement in 2013, uh, was agreed uh, to cover all population. Uh, population uh, the target population uh, until now is 50 to 69. Is more than 600,000 people investing in equity and quality. Yeah, is very very important. This is uh, our our book. <laughs> Rich vulnerable people. Uh, we participate in in a, in a project uh, to uh, to measure the um, inequities uh, with uh, WHO. And population-based ob objective, yes, because uh, we need to uh, to reach everybody. Working together, working together with media, with the uh, population, with the staff, with the network, uh, Spanish network, with in TV uh, in meetings. We invite in meetings uh, staff and uh, um, patient association. Uh, we uh, participate in different meetings uh, coordinated by the patient association and we uh, we uh, share uh, primary 
primary, primary, primary uh, uh, intervention and secondary intervention to reduce colorectal cancer. Yeah, this is a, a nice picture with cooks. Yeah, uh, they uh, invite us to, to cook uh, uh, healthy as well. And with uh, the other programs, uh, my convinced, uh, uh, colleagues of the uh, cervical and uh, breast cancer. And we uh, we perform uh, and build uh, a lot of the, a lot of teams uh, to extend uh, our research and to evaluate the program. Many indicators. Yes, we we uh, yeah have a high coverture and um, we in, in, uh, follow follow this uh, this invitation every two years. Participation rate is very very high. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we are we are worried because it's uh, seventy two no more. Uh, we we need to improve as well. Yeah, and cancer detected uh, are important uh, uh, 70 percent in in each and each stage and also advanced adenomas uh, very very high uh, proportion of advanced adenomas detected by the program and now uh, we are in plan adjust check improve that is uh, our our uh, our guide yeah uh, an our plan, we establish an our plan and uh, discuss with uh, organizations, with authorities, and we uh, we uh, uh, perform this plan and uh, and we invite uh, people um, considering the the uh, the uh, colonoscopies, considering uh, colonoscopies because we we have uh, uh, thirty days to perform colonoscopy from a uh, from, um, um, referral to, uh, to a primary care uh, doctor to uh, colonoscopy. And this is, uh, yeah, very, 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 very tight. Yeah. Feedback results, all results are in the, in the website. Quality assessment, yeah, we um, follow uh, all indicators and we uh, share these indicators. Uh, we published these indicators as well. Uh, we published uh, cost-effective assessment mm -hmm. and inequalities assessment as well. We are involved in inequalities, uh, reduce inequalities. And we invite, and, uh, and we uh, uh, have invited by a patient association to different meetings, uh, meetings, uh, Special meetings uh, uh, promoted by uh, by our uh, um, association and uh, promoted by them. And um, yeah, yeah, I think it's it's important to to have an open mind to listen and change because it's important to to um, to uh, to to listen uh, everybody. About the, about the program. In conclusion, preparedness is the best investment. Make decision based on your own data. That is very important, yeah, because we share our data, our uh, complications, our benefits, uh, our participation rate uh, and compare with uh, different uh, different uh, um, health centers, for example, or an organization. Involve and get commitment from uh, staff and from population uh, and continue evaluation because it's, uh, it's the it, is the 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 the, the crucial uh, um, tax for us. And writing to uh, decrease inequalities, uh, increase the, uh, the the age group to seventy four, and and other uh, other suggestions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Isabel. Uh, very interesting to hear about how the program has, has developed and evolved over time. Now let's, um, and as a reminder to our audience, 
all of the PowerPoints will be shared. And so you, you will be able to take this material away. Let me now invite um, the other members of our panel to, to share with us. And I'm going to start in Italy. Carlo, talk to us about how in Italy you've been finding a way to have an integrated campaign with all the different stakeholders. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, unfortunately, my camera is not allowed to be uh, started because it was interrupted by the host. But um, OK, thank you very much. There is still some there are still some problems. I oh, know they are here. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, inviting me. In fact, the bus country program and the Dutch program represent very good examples of how to implement a successful screening program. In Italy, we have uh, a, a national program which is implemented at the regional level. And uh, based on the experience uh, also the, of this interaction between our national and regional levels, we can see that two main set of actions are needed to enhance uh, successful collaboration of all stakeholders. The first of all, there is the need to adopt policies and legislation measures supporting the implementation of population-based programs in addressing barriers to uptake. Screening has been included among the basic level of care, which, is, which are, uh, should be offered free of charge to all citizens covered by the national service. So uh, cost barrier is uh, need to be uh, avoided, eliminated. National guidelines have been adopted uh, and shared, and they are regularly updated. And uh, we have coverage targets that have been defined, and they are linked to incentive for healthcare managers in several regions. Some regions in Italy also implemented measures restricting the access to diagnostic tests for colorectal cancer outside screening program to symptomatic subjects. All uh, asymptomatic subjects requesting diagnostic tests for early diagnosis of cancer are referred into uh, organized programs. In fact, uh, the diffusion of opportunistic tests uh, we have experienced represents a, a barrier to effective screening as it undermines participation in organized program and uh, um, it uh, uh, duplicates the efforts or inefficient utilization of resources without additional benefit. Uh, opportunity practice, in fact, uh, often does not keep evidence-based recommendation and it cannot be properly monitored. The second set of actions uh, in uh, our experience include measures aimed to support implementation of uh, the infrastructure, the organization infrastructure, which is favoring delivery of high quality screening, uh, information system, communication plans uh, to uh, promote screening, and also monitoring quality assurance and training, which are strictly related. In fact, establishing screening registries and implementing systematic monitoring offer the opportunity to provide feedback to health professionals who are working in screening about quality and performance indicators. And so this is supporting the continuous quality, uh, in continuous quality improvement effort that is audit uh, um, and the review of the activity. And this favors involvement of health professionals. They are uh, active players in promoting quality and uh, favoring the success of the program. And this is also important because it has an impact also on the quality of clinical service for symptomatic patients. This is an important achievement of uh, screening programs uh, in Italy. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. So there's the view from Italy about how they involve uh, different partners. Now let's turn to uh, Central Europe and hear from the Czech Republic, Professor Judith Spichak. How do you integrate uh, different stakeholders in your screening programs? Professor Spichak? Excuse me, yeah. Can you repeat the, the, the question, please? Uh, Isabel, I was just inviting our next member of the panel to speak. That's Professor Julius Spichak from the Czech Republic. And we seem to have some problem at the moment. Let, let's try and fix us, but let's go straight on to Finland. Dr. Tita Sarkiala, if I've pronounced the name correctly. Dr. Sarkiala, would you like to unmute yourself? Yes, yes, I will. Hello, I, there I you are. That. Yeah, hello, hello. Hello from Finland. We have here slight snow on the ground at the moment, but it will melt soon, I suppose. 
Okay, well, um, I'll describe you a bit about our screening program programs in Finland. I work at the Finnish Cancer Registry as a director and we are responsible for coordinating registering and uh, evaluating all cancer screening program, programs in Finland. And we have two national screening programs, breast and cervix, and then we are piloting currently FIT screening since April 2019. Previously, we had a GFOP program, which was a randomized program between 2004 and 2014. And uh, we evaluated that program in 2015 and found out that uh, the more, there was a mortality reduction in colorectal cancer in men, but not in women. And therefore, we have a special emphasis on this new FIT pilot to uh, concentrate on women as well as men. And therefore, we have different cutoff levels for men and women to start with. And uh, we have uh, currently we have 12 voluntary municipalities participating to this FIT program and we have one central laboratory and we are closely co collaborate with these, these two, uh, with, the, with this central laboratory to um, construct IT system and to have a, a great data flow between the registry and, and, and the laboratory. And the laboratory takes care of these invitations and analyzes and also collects the data for us. And uh, other key stakeholders in Finland uh, uh, are, um, for example, we have established a clinical and epidemiological expert group to um, plan this pilot. And there are five members from each university hospitals in that, in that expert group. They are gastroenterologists and uh, gastro um, surgeons. And then we have epidemiologists in that group as well. And we are collaborating together all the time. And now we have just prepared the first manuscript from the first pilot year it has been submitted. And we are collaborating also with Iris and uh, the Dutch team to make a cost effectiveness analysis on our on, on our based on our pilot data data and then misc and modeling and that's underway at the moment and then in finland we collaborate of course with the ministry of health and then national screening board and then the municipalities which are basically responsible on the organization of screening programs in finland also this pilot phase of fit Thank you. Thank you. I'm 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 struck by something that it, from both the Isabel's presentation and your your talks and also from Italy, is just the amount of time that's invested in creating the relationships between the different bits of the health system that need to work together. And I'm wondering if um, there's something that we can say to us. But I noticed that uh, uh, Dr. Speechat, we we you've joined us. Yeah, I actually. Uh... My name is Thomas, and I only, uh, you know, excuse uh, Professor Spichak for not being able to participate today. I'm very sorry. No, no problem. Um, we were just uh, trying to get a sense from different countries how you get the different stakeholders together to get an integrated integrated campaign. What can you tell us about the Czech Republic, Thomas? I'm sorry, I, you know, I am unfortunately not able to to. Um, Tell you anything i'm not familiar with the topic i'm okay just wanted to you know excuse you thank you well pass our best regards to him and and thank you for passing the message on so let me come back to this issue um uh, isabel and, and tutti perhaps could you tell us you know how you you what you're talking about the successes you get are the results of slowly building the relationships with the stakeholders, giving a consensus about how to do it. You, you've mentioned in the chat, Isabel, about how you link the invitations to the capacity of the system, because I'm sure that, you know, this might overcome some of the resistance of stakeholders to say, whoa, we've already got too many people to treat. Don't bring new people in. So you have to move, take a step forward with everyone together. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? relationship building and is it more complicated in countries like Italy and Spain where the health system is very decentralized? Yeah, 
Uh, yes. Um, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, we started, um, uh, we, we think we started uh, to send uh, the kit uh, at home. Uh, that is the, the first uh, uh, program in Spain, because we uh, consider that uh, was um, yeah what yeah an opportunity yeah to check yeah and um, uh, 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 I, I think uh, we have uh, a lot of barriers yeah from different people from uh, digestive uh, they consider them con didn't consider that uh, fit was uh, was useful yeah. They considered that colonoscopy is better than fit, and that was the the first barrier. The other barrier was uh, was um, the the resources, yeah, resources, because um, in uh, the uh, hospitals um, uh, have not enough resources to perform colonoscopies. Uh, uh, was the, the 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 first barrier that um, in that case um, authorities. Because they they consider that uh, that uh, what, uh, was important the, the program invest a lot yeah in resources in equipments in, uh, in human resources and that is an opportunity yeah um, we consider that uh, authorities in our region um, were really really um, really the 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 the, 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 the crucial part of the program because they uh, considered yeah it's possible to send my post yes yes no problem check is possible to to invest in it's yes no problem invest invest because uh, maybe it's important to invest now to uh, to uh, to for for the future and um, uh, we consider that uh, um, we are few people, but uh, we have a, a, a big, big network and a lot of people who um, are uh, satisfied because we are transparent. We uh, not only uh, um, explain benefits, explain uh, problems, quality of delays or uh, complications, or a false negative and we published all not but not only published the the results and we explain the results to the staff and to everybody we are transparent that that, that is important as well yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i may comment from uh, from italy yeah. Uh, well, the, uh, in fact, uh, endoscopy resources are uh, often uh, in several regions uh, limiting the diffusion of screening because, of course, you need uh, uh, to have uh, a plan uh, where the invitations are matching the endoscopy capacity. Uh, so the, there are uh, two issues that uh, are important, probably. The first one is awareness about uh, screening as a priority because uh, investing in screening is also um, resulting in a, a reduction in future cost for healthcare. So that is something that should be promoted also at the political level. And uh, the other issue is uh, uh, the uh, optimization of uh, the resource utilization, investment in appropriateness. That is, uh, uh, endoscopists are um, realizing that the screening activity is uh, highly effective, that there is a monitor, the quality of activity is very high. And the, uh, the, uh, the examination are generally appropriate. There is a high priority for performing this examination. Um, the appropriate may be a problem, for example, in surveillance. We might uh, uh, avoid unnecessary colonoscopy also in screening so that we can have more resources available for primary, for uh, testing those who are fit positive. But also in the clinical uh, setting, there is a uh, a lot of uh, um, inappropriate examination that could be uh, reduced, uh, uh, making more resources avail available for screening. So you need investment, uh, but you need also to invest on quality and uh, appropriateness. And it's something that screening is bringing in the uh, discussion, in the political agenda. And it, uh, I mean, it takes time, 
but uh, that might be a way to overcome this problem. Uh, investing in appropriate is much more uh, necessary now, given the uh, short of the resources following the COVID crisis, where most programs were obliged to stop their activity. They have a huge backlog. And so uh, that giving priorities for those uh, examinations were most appropriate will be important also to maintain screening in the next future. Thank you. Let me uh, pick up on, on, I think, two things there. The first thing is this, this emphasis that's coming through on quality, because in the chat, we're getting quite a few uh, conversations about the quality of the colonoscopy and the qualifications of the person who does it. And in, whether in each country, as, as part of your medical curricula, you're required to do a certain number of colonoscopies before you can be integrated into the screening program. So that's the first thing is, and I think, the, the message that was made very clearly is when appropriately done by a qualified person, a colonoscopy acts as a, a very useful preventative tool. So let's let's ask the question, you know, do we have an issue? Are all countries able to deliver a, a colonoscopy at, at high quality? And the second issue that's come up in the chat that might be worth exploring is the role of GPs, the primary care practitioners, who are perhaps the most likely of any healthcare professional to engage with those target audiences that are the hardest to reach. That's often the men, uh, older men with a lower educational status. Perhaps the only healthcare professional I might occasionally see would be either a pharmacist or a GP. So how do we make sure that the GPs are part of the solution rather than the problem? Because the previous panel from France said shifting from a GP system to an invitation direct to the, the patient is going to increase uptake. So panel members, who, would, who wants to pick up on the, either this issue about the quality of the colonoscopy and the, the qualifications and the experience of the person doing it? Or the second issue about GPs, how do we bring them in so they're no longer the gatekeeper, but they can be the, the, the messenger to increase the invites when they see people who are most at need? Who would like to pick up on that? Just a quick comment on quality. I think that quality is also related to the organization of screening, uh, having devoted session to screening. The designated, designated session for screening is important to improve quality because uh, uh, the screening examination should be concentrated in some specific uh, uh, sessions. That, uh, the other issue about GPs, I think that GPs are important to promote the screening to counsel people uh, who are hesitant to undergo screening, who don't want to go for uh, assessment. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, to uh, promote screening among those who are uh, not uh, familiar with uh, written information you, uh, that, uh, that is usually conveyed in the invitation letters from uh, organized program. So you can address with personal uh, discussion the, their fears and their uh, attitude against uh, or limiting their uh, access to screening. Um, GPs cannot probably act as uh, uh, those, uh, the main actors in the organization of screening. The problem in France, as far as I could understand, was related mainly to uh, leaving the, to having the GP delivering the kit. Kit delivery is, may not uh, go to the GP, it's better through mailing or pharmacies or so on. GPs should not be involved in direct organization, but should be involved in promotion. Probably. Okay, thank you. Isabel, do you want to pick up on, on these two questions about, you know, primary care GPs? Um, and, you know, is that somebody's in the chat has said, you know, how, how can that work in some of the very large regions in Spain? How do you shorten those connections between the GPs and the sort of centralized institutions that might carry out a colonoscopy? Uh, well, uh, we involve all the all the primary uh, primary care uh, staff. Yeah, but in, in case, for example, the samples, yeah, the samples, uh, uh, people drop the sample in the in the box, yeah, and samples was uh, sent to laboratory and spent uh, uh, a nurse spent uh, less than uh, half an hour in in this uh, in this uh, task, yeah, sent to laboratory. Laboratory uh, um, uh, validate yeah the sample 
And uh, the result uh, was in medical record and in our uh, in our software. Uh, but GP only uh, only uh, the, the people receive a letter, a positive letter or negative letter. And people um, only um, have an appointment in positive cases. Yeah, uh, for each uh, GP. Is only uh, 14, 16 uh, people in three months, yeah, three positives, yeah. After that, they go after uh, uh, they go to the uh, an appointment with the GP, GP, GP um, uh, uh, refer to colonoscopy and uh, give uh, the informed consent and send uh, the, uh, well, with uh, an appointment uh, to nurse in primary care and primary care. Uh, have a special uh, visit with the, the this uh, person, yeah, to give uh, the um, the cleansing, uh, to to advise about the uh, colonoscopy problems, so, uh, to uh, give uh, some some uh, some information about colonoscopy, yeah, and it's uh, only for these people, only 14, 16 people in three months. It's not. Uh, it's not a barrier because it's not uh, 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 it's not a uh, over task yeah it's a, a small tax and after all yeah when uh, the colonoscopy is performed uh, uh, people uh, uh, go to a primary care doctor yeah primary care to uh, explain the result the result is uh, um uh, they follow uh, with us the, the uh, all positive cases uh, all po all uh, re, um, uh, result of colonoscopy and the, we we work together and this is uh, I, I, I think the problem is uh, in other countries or in other regions uh, they ask they have an appointment uh, for uh, ask the the kid or for uh, everybody uh, everything. And in our case, we decrease the bureaucracy yeah, because uh, um, primary care doctors are uh, have a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of patients, yeah. And we 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 uh, we thought it's important to decrease bureaucracy. It's important only give them the uh, the special task. The special task is patient. Patient, positive patient only, yeah. But they um, they uh, are in 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 the village uh, in uh, uh, their communities and promote uh, the the program as well and participate in campaigns with the uh, 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 patient association with the community with local uh, local authorities and they really really they they, they do uh, some things. Uh, uh, with the program, and this is because of that. In some in some health centers, we have more than eighty percent of participation rate, and more than ninety ninety seven percent of adherence to colonoscopy. It's because of that. I think it's it's a, a coordination, but uh, decreasing the bureaucracy tax for them. Okay, thank you. Let me now turn to Finland to see if you can pick up on this element about bringing in the, the front line of primary care. And I would, for me, that's pharmacists and that's uh, GPs. You know, if, if what we've heard about here, I mean, Isabel's mentioned it and it's come through in the chat, the, the huge value of very local services where the people who are in direct contact with patients all the time are leveraging their trusting relationship to bring people in to the system and, and that that's great but it means that there's a risk that you have a very fragmented approach so how do we ensure that it is a truly national program that everyone has access to even if locally the invitations in come through uh, different frontline providers what can you share from finland uh, dr sakiala well our our program in finland uh, is more or less like it is in in the basque country, meaning that uh, the, we have this central laboratory, which I already mentioned, they send the invitations straight to these people, they take the test, 
and they return it by post to the laboratory, then they get the, the uh, information on the test result, either negative or positive. And if it is positive, then there is a request that these people contact NERS because each municipality who are involved, which is involved in this program has a contact nurse. They hire a contact nurse who take care of these referrals to a colonoscopy. So GPs are not involved at all in this program. So uh, these, these contact nurses take care of these discussions with these people who have positive test results. They, they ask them questions and then they, they find out whether these people are, uh, whether they can send them to colonoscopy and then then they, the, the first doctor is in the colonoscopy then, which these people meet. So um, this is kind of a separate system from the primary healthcare totally. And then uh, with the colonoscopy, we provide training for all colonoscopists who are involved in the program, or we have provided, but of course, due, due to this um, coronavirus situation, we are not, we haven't been able to organize these trainings anymore. We had two already, but we are planning to have a, the second or the third one now through net, through internet. Okay, thank you. We've had a couple more um, elements come up through, through the chat. Um, part of the challenge that we, we've had highlighted from Natasha is that you can involve primary care um, healthcare professionals often because they're part of their 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 uh, financial incentives is for education and for prevention but then sometimes they feel that the epidemiologists are pushing them too far and that it's um it's additional work that they have to take on and they don't have time so we can use this relationship but be aware that sometimes gps and frontline uh, primary care workers are already overloaded and to have a long conversation and explain to someone about colorectal cancer, about the screening, etc. is just too much. So it's, um, you know, there's, I think the, the message is coming through, it's an opportunity, but we can't rely on it alone because there may be some gaps. Somebody said it may not be reliable. Um, just before we close this session, because we've only got a few more minutes, I'm interested in trying to find out here we've got a message about you know how do we ensure that people who live in very rural areas small towns get access to the same level of support and care as people in medium-sized towns or large cities so if um i know that you know both italy and spain and finland you're all countries that have heavy concentrations of populations in the cities but also quite a lot of small rural settlements so when you're looking at a national program how do you ensure that the people in the more rural areas who are not in the same connections are still getting included in your system and that would be the, the last element in this conversation so i'll start with isabel and then we'll go to um tutti and carlo and just say how do you manage the rural city divide uh, well, in Spain, there are uh, differences between rural and uh, cities, but in the past countries, uh, it's a small country, but uh, uh, and it's very industrialized and it's difficult to distinguish yeah, uh, rural and uh, cities. But it's uh, really in, in most the private um, uh, um, um, areas, yeah, small areas, yeah, uh, in cities, yeah, the participation rate is is lower, yeah, and in but we we found, for example, in in very industrialized uh, um, uh, village, for example, the participation rate is is very high, and it's difficult. I I, I think is. Is, uh, is uh, the, the, um, it depends on uh, deprivation, uh, small areas deprivation than uh, cities or rural areas. I think it's, it's very important. And we are investing in this uh, kind of subject because uh, uh, we are worried because 26% uh, uh, of the uh, people uh, uh, are not participants and uh, it's okay. important. Yeah? Thank it's you. Important. Thank you. Carlo, anything you can tell us from Italy about the experience of supporting very small villages um, in being involved in this kind of screening programs? Uh, yes, well, uh, in fact, uh, 
uh, often in Italy, in uh, small communities, participation is even higher than in large uh, cities, probably because the feeling of a community is much stronger in the small uh, small cities, small uh, in rural areas, and so the, the role of uh, the GP, the role of pharmacists, the role of the um, the bulk, the community is uh, more important, and they the support, the social support, uh, is uh, uh, favoring participation, where uh, there is a uh, more deprivation, more uh, social uh, uh, problems, like in some sort of uh, large city oh, neighborhoods participation. Um, is, uh, uh, often, uh, uh, lower. So the participation may be lower. The, the issue in fact is probably more the area deprivation, uh, which is affected, the level of deprivation, which is affecting participation. And this is a problem in some regions uh, in Italy where there are huge uh, social problems and organizational problems which are limiting participation. We have still a huge uh, variability is different between the central northern Italy and southern Italy. And this is uh, not mainly related to uh, rural or um, industrial city uh, areas, but more on uh, the level of deprivation and organization of the services. Great. Thank you. And just to, to wrap up, uh, the last word from Finland, you know, looking at where, where you've got gaps, maybe from rural to to city areas, how do you manage making sure that you you, you reach each equally? Mm. Well, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, our system is such that we send a personal kit to everyone at home, irrespective of where where they live. So the system is similar everywhere. And in each municipality, we have contact nurses. So I don't think this is a problem, really. And Indeed, it's the same in Finland as well, that uh, the, the participation rate is a bit higher in rural areas than in big cities. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much to our panel members, um, uh, to, to Isabel, to Carlo, to um, Julius, who unfortunately was only able to I, briefly... I, sorry. I, hello. I, hello. Hello, hello, hello. I have to apologize myself. No so, problem. Uh, I, I will send you the presentation. I will send you by email or the participants the presentation concerning the situation in the Czech Republic. I have to say this year, the program was fully paralyzed due to the COVID infection. So the number of the screen colonoscopies uh, went down about 20, more than 20%. And uh, particularly in the beginning of the epidemic, in the beginning, in the, in the, in the, in the March and the April. Otherwise, I will send you the presentation uh, the coverage by the screening is about 30 percent. It's not increasing. It's not increasing. We have to work how to increase the, how to increase the participation because we are not, of course, fully satisfied. So, but the number of the new cases and also the mortality is going down. So I will send you. I prepared a presentation and I will send you to all the participants. Okay. Thank you very much, and we will share that. And and uh, thank you sorry, for sorry, finding sorry, the time. Couldn't be here, no problem. So. Sorry, thank you. No problem, and, thank you. And pleasure to see you. Pleasure to see all of you. So, because otherwise, only Corona. Like true, everybody. that's thank true. You. So, uh, thank you uh, for that. And also to Dr. Tirti uh, Sakiala from Finland. Thank you to our panel members.